I knew all the monsters in my life. But what I didn't know was the liars. Like a normal person who turned into a monster. My name is Keisha Head, and I am a survivor of human trafficking in the form of commercial sexual exploitation of children. I was born to a schizophrenic mother, and my life started at a disadvantage. Um, I ran away with a, a group of girls. Um, we ran to an area called Roswell, Georgia. And we stayed in abandoned apartments. We actually had like an abandoned apartment where the, the maintenance guy would give us an apartment and the lights would be on and we would stay there and when they would rent it out, he would tell us, no, go to this apartment. So he was facilitating the whole thing. Um, he just felt compassion for a group of kids that didn't have anywhere to go. Um, and so, but that didn't last, of course. Our resources after a few weeks got depleted. I called um, my godmother and I asked her, could she help me? And she was like, no, you should, you've been acting out and you've had this baby and your life is just so da, 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 da. She told me she had a friend who had been trying to contact me, who I had grew up with in church. And I called my friend and I asked her, um, you know, I ran away. I don't have any help. Um, do you know anyone who could help me? And she said, well, I know someone who can help you. And so, we went and we met this guy. He was very nice. He, she introduced me and she said, this is Keisha and Keisha, this is Sir Charles. And not even thinking the name of Pimp, but I didn't even know what a pimp was to be honest with you. And so I told him about my daughter. He took me to get my daughter. I hadn't seen my baby in about nine months. And we took her to the playground and it was just a normal day. And I remember thinking, wow, he took me to get something to eat. He told me how beautiful I was. He told me I was talking about my clothes. I don't have any clothes. You can get clothes. I'll get you clothes. You don't have to be homeless. You know, you can take care of yourself. And I was like, yeah, oh, really? Like, you think so? Because I, I was just that naive. He took me, he took my, we took my daughter home. Um, and then we went to the house, Sir Charles's house, and I saw other girls my age, some younger. Um, they were busy in themselves, cleaning up. They had their rooms. Um, they were helping each other, doing hair, and and I fit right in. They, they, Sir Charles introduced me, and then he left me there with the girls. And they were getting ready for work. And they kept saying, we're getting ready for work. And we got to be there at such time. And I was like, work? Where you work at? And they wouldn't tell me. And so, so Charles came back. He put us all in the car. Um, and some girls had their own cars. Um, we rode to the strip club. And we went in. And that's when I seen, just saw this inside of an adult entertainment establishment. And he said, well, you you can make money, you wanna make some money? I was like, yeah, I wanna make some money. I need money to buy me some stuff. And so and that night I stripped and I made a few hundred dollars. That lasted three nights that happened. And on that third night, he told me, he took the girls to the strip and I was about to get out of the car. And he said, no, you have to come with me. You can't go strip because I noticed that the stripper, the stripper girls were a little older than the other girls, and the other girls had to go somewhere, but I didn't know where they were going. So he said, you have to come with me, and we have, I have to take you somewhere else because you're underage, and I can get in real big trouble if you're stripping, and they catch you. And so I was like, okay, I have to do something else. I didn't know what the other else was, <laughs> so I just went with him. And he took me to Stewart Avenue. I knew what Stewart Avenue was just by hearing uh, people talk about it. He took me to this corner and he told me to get out the car. And before I got out, he gave me all these rules. 
you will charge this much, you won't talk to pimps. And this, I said, pimps? And he said, yeah, you won't talk to pimps. He said, what you think going on here? And he started changing to this other person. I'm like, okay. Um, but he was telling me all these things to do, a list of things, and they were coming so fast at me. And I said, and then when he said, you would charge such and such for a, one sexual act, such and such for another sexual act, I said, no, I'm not doing that. And he said, oh, you're going to do it. If you don't do it, you know that little girl he showed me, and he started talking about my daughter. He said, I'll make sure something happens to her. And I'm like, what? And I said, okay, just let me get out the car. So I got out the car, I wobbled out the car, and I didn't catch it that night. What caught me was a police officer, and he said, hey, you, what are you doing out here? And Sir Charles had told me to say um, that I'm waiting for someone. And so I told him I'm waiting on someone. And the police officer looked at me, and he said, you don't belong out here. You belong on Peachtree Street, where the pretty girls are. And I don't know what changed in my mind that night because I thought the police would see me and help me because I wanted to tell him there's a guy over there looking like, but I was too scared. I was terrified. Um, the very first night um, when I was on the track, we came home, he handcuffed me to the bed and he beat me with a belt. And he said, I'm gonna name you Choicey because I want you to know you don't have no choices. Whatever I tell you to do, you're gonna do it, and he beat me. I stayed probably about a year and a half, practically a year, almost two years. And one night, I had went to a hotel room with this guy, and he raped me like really bad. He was pistol with me, and he raped me. And I got unconscious. And I woke up in the hotel room, and I had urinated on myself, and I had called Sir Charles. I told him I, he beat me real bad, and he sodomized me, and he did all these things to me. Can you come get me? And I told him where I was. He took me home. He ran me a bubble bath, and I was crying. And he said, you'll be all right. Tough enough. You okay? And I knew, like, I need to go to the hospital, <laughs> like, why don't this person see that I'm hurt? Or that this is not love, this is not caring about nobody. So I said, uh-uh, I have to go. And I went to work the next night. He made me go to work the next night. And I remember um, talking to this client and I was telling him this stuff. I was like, I can't do this anymore, I'm sorry. Here's your money back. I can't do it, I'm, I just need to go So Can you help me? Like this man, I'm with this guy, and he took me to this hotel for a week. He paid it for a week, he didn't have, try to have sex with me or anything. And um, I stayed there a week. I didn't have, I just stayed in the room for a whole week and I said, I gotta do something. And I didn't go back to Sir Charles. And I left him, but I didn't leave the life, it was, I knew of a way to survive now, so I started bringing clients to the hotel room and making money and living like that. I said, okay, I'm going to start an escort service and just be my own boss. And that's just, that lasted for 10 years, and that's why I was. I cannot express in words the importance of healing. That has changed my life. It's changed me as a person. It's changed my relationships with people. Um, because I walked around with a lot of hate and a lot of anger. And when my life, when I hit my rock bottom in 2006 by going to prison, and here I am for the first time in my life from, since the age of 12, that I don't have to worry about bills, I don't have to worry about where I'm gonna sleep or where I'm gonna, what I'm gonna eat or a career, because I got felonies in the midst of all of this. So I don't have to worry about where I'm gonna get a job and how I'm gonna support my family. I was able to just, my world was quieted, and I could just focus on why am I here? Why am I in prison? Why? And for a long time, I did the blame game. It's because my aunt did this, it's because my sexual abuse and my trafficker and mm -hmm. this and that, but that happened many years ago, but why am I here? Like, this is me, and I had to learn 
um, what I was responsible for and what I wasn't responsible for. There were some things that I was responsible for and taking ownership for that, like I could have stayed in this group home and tried a little harder. Um, even though I was hurting, I could do this. I could have a life outside of human trafficking or, or prostitution. And I walked out the gates and reality hit me again. I was like, uh-oh, what do I do now? I've been in prison for three years. The first thing that came to my mind was prostitution. That was the first thing because no one came and got me. No one, I didn't have any resources, somebody to come pick me up and take me home. I didn't have that. I had to leave prison and go to the shelter. So it was like, okay. But I made the decision that no matter what, no matter where I go, no matter how broke I am, prostitution is never an option for me. Never again. So what do I do now? And so I started, got a job with 14 felons, two weeks out of prison, got a job. I was like, wow, that was easy. But for many years, I made excuses. I can't get a job, I have a felony. But two weeks out, I got a job, got money, got my own apartment, got one registered in school, and got married. Nine months out of prison, I'm married. A few months later, I'm my husband and I having a baby. And I was like, this is wonderful. Like, I could do it. And people need to know you can overcome this and you can do, you can live life and have joy after such traumatic experiences.